made the move a couple of months ago with great success for the Cardinals. It got some good shooters in on the wing, but Dwayne Wade, he can do so many things for Marquette offensively and defensively. You know, Louisville was the dominant team of the 80s. Let us not forget the amazing job Hall of Famer Denny Crum did. They won two national titles. I believe that right now, Louisville's heading to be one of the dominant teams in the 2000s. You can see the home winning streak for Marquette. It goes back a couple of years, 28 games. The last game they lost in this building Louisville. to Louisville two years ago in triple overtime, and the Cardinals come out wearing black uniforms for the first time this season instead of their traditional road red. And they're 0-4 in the blacks last year. But Rick Pitino said, hey, that was against Indiana, Cincinnati. It didn't matter. Kentucky, it didn't matter who we were, who we were wearing. We would have lost. Tyquan Dean, a sharp shooting freshman, knocks down a jumper, and Wade answers at the other end. And that's what all Americans are supposed to do. Make the big play. Get your team off to a great start. Get this environment jumping. You're Louisville. You want to quiet the crowd down and want a good early start. This is the first matchup of the season between these two. They'll meet again 12 days from now down at Freedom Hall, a game you and I are going to be at as well. This is becoming a great rivalry in this league and across the country, the way these two programs are moving up. Now you're going to take a look at Wade from out of Chicago to Windy City. There he's under control. He lays it off the glass, gets the good angle to utilize the glass. He's just a big-time all-around player. He defends well. He averages 2.3 steals a game. He rebounds. He's excellent in transition, and he wants the ball late in the game. A very unselfish player as well. Plays within the team concept. This is Garcia. Skinny 6'7 freshman, but he can really shoot it. As can Dean. He airballs that one. Ellis Miles with a rebound. And now it comes free to Wade, and Marquette's going to try to run. Travis Dean are playing with a little bit of a back problem. Is that he couldn't practice Thursday? Wade wide open, misses the three. Merritt keeps it alive, but it's out of bounds to Louisville. You know, a trademark for Tom Cree, who's a disciple as you look at Rick Pitino. One of the greats really belongs in college. He's a teacher. He's a motivator. When you talk about Tom Green, he came out of that stable of Tom Izzo, just like Stan Heath. And he really epitomizes Tom Izzo with great, great effort, tenacity. And his players reflect his personality, his intensity, and his toughness. This Marquette team really gets after you. I tell you, when I was talking to the late Al McGuire, who's synonymous with Marquette basketball, he told me prior to his passing, he said, we have a star. Tyquan Dean may be a star right now for Rick Pitino. He has all five of Louisville's points. You know, Dean's from out of Neptune High School. High school produced an actor by the name of Jack Nicholson. Wow. Up for another Academy Award. He and Garcia both committed to Rick Pitino without ever visiting Louisville. That's how badly they wanted to play for Rick Pitino. And that's what he brings. He's got star quality Pitino. Nice pass by Gaines. Good ball movement. Garcia, another jumper long. Rick really was on them about rebounding. That they had to give a great effort. This game, he's from Madison West High School, right in Wisconsin. Told me before the game, he narrowed his choices to Wisconsin, Maryland, and Louisville. An 8-2 start for Louisville. Dean and Gaines with early threes. Wade misses a jumper. And Gaines with a rebound. So far, Marquette unable to control the glass against the Cardinals. See, Wade's got to use his driving ability rather than the jump shot. He's an explosive driver, Dan. He's a devastating one-bounce and elevate mid-range kind of guy. There's his own defense. They'll play multiple defenses. Tom free. They really make it difficult for you to get a good shot. Garcia again. He's called early in the rebound to Diener. It was a collision in the game at DePaul on Wednesday night late in the game that knocked Diener out. He missed practice Thursday, was back yesterday. Robert Jackson, the transfer from Mississippi State, a native of Milwaukee, knocks down the jumper. He was outstanding in the SEC at Mississippi State. He's one of my all Marco Polos, a traveling man who's been an impact player okay. here. Well, Marvin Stone, another guy. You've got a couple of guys who have come from the SEC to Conference USA in Jackson and Stone. Take a look. We're going to see Mr. Gage right now. One of the premier players in America. There he is on the perimeter. He's got great size for a guard. They reverse the ball. There he is showing some great range. That's beyond the three-point line in college basketball. Marvin Stone to the line. The transfer from Kentucky. Sat out the first semester. Had some big games early. And he's averaging 
12 points, 8 rebounds per game, but in the loss to St. Louis on he Wednesday night, a point. not a point, and he's 6'10", 250. And he was 0 for 2, and he was 0 for 5 against Ohio State, didn't score a point. Startes has been playing well for them out of junior college, comes on the floor, he gives them another inside presence. Stone has got to be active. They're going to win the game here today. He has got to be active on the inside. And another thing to be concerned about here if you're a Marquette fan is Louisville's had a history of coming from behind. They've been down double figures to Indiana, to Tennessee, to Ohio State, and have come back and won. Well, would you agree that along with teams like Arizona and Texas, Louisville uses depth as much as any team in the country? Oh, I would agree with you, Dan. No doubt. He rotates 10 yeah. players. And they're strong at the end of the game when you're tired. Jackson, no, but Maris slams it home. I tell you, Maris really been playing well for them. He has 100 defensive rebounds. That's an offensive rebound from the weak side. No blockouts. A major concern of Rick Pitino. Players as fired up as the fans are early. Good rebound underneath by Todd Townsend. He has really been playing well for them. Making the three as 33s. He's knocked down Townsend. Diener to Jackson. Not this time. Games one on three. And a good decision. Yes, St. Louis, they could not create Pepper. You ready for this? They better not go to St. Louis. They've lost this six years in a row. Steal by Diener. Takes a hard shot and crashes to the floor. And we're going to see if he's okay after the back injury on Wednesday. Yeah, he's got a back problem. Could not practice Thursday. Getting up slowly. But they say he's a tough kid. And his coach is as tough as it comes. His brother-in-law is Jim Harbaugh. Now a quarterback's coach down here with the Raiders. Yep. There's a look at Mr. Petito. Very happy. Really happy here coaching at Louisville. Said he loves it. Tom George, the AD, we met he and his beautiful wife. He overachieved, man. Terry, Terry Lynn. Lynn yeah. Yes, sir. Tom George made a great choice bringing Mr. Patino. He, he didn't waste any time. When Patino resigned with the Boston Celtics, he immediately contacted them, went to Miami, spent time with Rick. They developed a little relationship, and Rick said, I'm coming back for the state of Kentucky. Well, the first thing you said to Rick Pitino this morning was, aren't you happy to be in college? I mean, you feel that college is just the place he should spend the rest of his career, right? Yeah, I think guys like Pitino and Calipari, their enthusiasm, their teaching ability. By the way, John Calipari, Memphis, put him in the NCAA. They're going to make it this year. Beat Illinois, beat Syracuse, beat Villanova, Ole Miss. Along with these two in Cincinnati, this conference could have four teams in the NCAA tournament this year. Marquette, four. Marquette goes to the break on a 6-0 run in the first of many standing O's in the house today. We're all tied up at eight. You describe yourself as a moderately risky investor. In that case, how comfortable would you be if in the short term your portfolio value declined by, say, 30%? How short is short term? You have to ride these things out. Not acceptable. I'm looking farther down the road than that. I'm going to suggest we modify your risk tolerance to fairly conservative. Yeah. Building wealth begins with a relationship, and our financial advisors know it. UBS Payne Weber. name brands and answers to your questions come to Radio Shack get this Sprint color screen phone only $49.99 view the web and download images and color I always wanted to be a name dropper Howie. Plus, Radio Shack 
NCAA Basketball, presented by UBS Payne Weber on ABC Sports. Brought to you by UBS Payne Weber. Building wealth begins with a relationship, and our financial advisors know it. And Toyota, get the feeling. Back here in Milwaukee inside the Bradley Center, Louisville and Marquette all tied up at 8. Dan Schulman to Dick Vitale with you in a very special story. Uh, in the building today, a man by the name of Trey Schwab, who is Marquette's special assistant in charge of video travel and recruiting. He has a rare and incurable lung disease, and he must wear a, an oxygen machine, as you can see, all the time when he's awake. Yesterday was National Organ Donation Day, and Trey Schwab has become one of the spokesmen, the spokespeople for uh, that organization and that cause, and he has now reached what he calls the top ten list in this particular part of the country, and his phone could ring at any minute to say, your transplant is ready. We're going to try and get you a lung that's going to be compatible. And uh, he said that the doctor who performs the procedure, Dick, has an 86% cure and survival rate. And it's, it's a great story. You know he had to lose over 100 pounds just to become eligible for the lung transplant. An amazing story. He was found out in two, December of 2001, thought he had pneumonia. And the bottom line is since then he's had six surgeries, experimental drug treatment, and now the only way that can help him is a lung transplant. And our prayers are with him. It's just a courageous young guy. I'll tell you, just a phenomenal story. I had a chance to talk to him before the game. And you wish him certainly nothing but the best. A real inspiration to everybody in the Marquette program as well. Tied at eight here early at the Bradley Center. Diener, nice no-look pass to Merritt. And an offensive foul against Merritt. Great job by Louisville rotating over defensively. What a great story. Louisville basketball two years ago. They only won 12 basketball games. But you just knew if you check Rick Pitino's resume, everywhere he's been the second year has been an amazing turnaround. Yep. Whether it be Boston University, Providence, Kentucky, what he did at Kentucky was amazing. Garcia, nice speed to Miles, and a tie-up as Merritt got in the way, and the ball's going to go over to the Eagles. Now, speaking of Kentucky, they won their 14th in a row today, playing as well as anybody in the nation as you look at Tom Green, a disciple of Tom Izzo. There's the turnaround from year one, Rick Pitino, to year two, just one win away from the number that they had last year, ranked second in the country. Now, that will change, of course, with a loss to St. Louis. Merritt with a tough drive, a little bit strong. you got to make that layup, a wide-open layup. you got the lead. you got to attack it. Merritt a little bit better. Gaines attacks the basket and draws the foul on Todd Townsend. What a wild day as you see some scores go across your screen. How many ranked teams have already lost here today? What about in the Big East? It's There's just Pittsburgh incredible. Right there. Look at that record right there to turn around only two losses. Only three teams in America with two losses. Arizona and Creighton. And Creighton, as you can see, in a battle right now with Wichita State. So that may change. Rebound is the only total that did not go up. And he's really concerned. He's heading for a monster recruiting class. I tell you, he and his staff done a phenomenal job recruiting. Mick Cronin and company. They got a kid coming in by the name of Brandon Jenkins from out of South Western High School in Detroit. They got another young guy, Nate Daniels, a big-time wing player from out of junior college, and they have an outstanding 6'10 shot blocker. Noah Bacchetti, a unbelievable shot blocker coming in as well from out of Barton County Junior College in Kansas. You saw Todd Townsend go to the bench for the Golden Eagles. He's got two fouls. Steve Novak has come in off Shoot. the bench for Marquette. That's right, a freshman from Brown Deer, Wisconsin, who had five threes in the win Wednesday against DePaul. 6'10 kid who can really shoot it from outside. You beat me to the punch. Right. Dan, Dan Schumann, you are so prepared. <laughs> I'm ready to talk about his five threes against DePaul. You, you know beat me to the touch. You know, Brad Nessup told me if I want to talk, I better talk early. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Larry O'Bannon into the game now for Louisville. This Louisville team exceptionally deep. We'll see 10 of 11 guys. There's O'Bannon from the wing. Around and out. Dartez with the offensive rebound. And Jackson brings it down. I think Jackson's a man. What an unbelievable asset he's been to Marquette. Here's Novak. He can shoot it. He can flat out shoot it, baby. He's got great range. He was Mr. Basketball in Wisconsin. As my partner said, he knocked down five against the ball. As highly recruited a player that Marquette has gotten in many a year. Here's O'Bannon from the other wing. This is another three, and Diener with a rebound. Marquette on the run. Two threes old. Diener all the way. That's a great drive. Forget about the back injury. Attacking the basket. The Golden Eagles fans just absolutely love it. The student body. 
with my buddy, with my buddy Al McGuire, love this environment. And he would love this team. As you look right there, Novak knocking down the trifecta. And then look at the little guy, Dina, taking it right to the goal. We got great shots today, man. We got award-winning Drew Esikoff with us. <laughs> I mean, we're talking Monday Night Football fame. And there's Al McGuire. Loved him. Loved him. He was such a real, genuine person with warmth a passion and don't ever believe that he couldn't coach that he didn't know the x's and o's he can manage a game from the sideline he and jimmy b jimmy valmano managed the game and really ran a bench better than anybody i've ever seen running a bench miles another missed three for louisville and a foul over the back against the cardinals i had some really unbelievable battles with with Al, and I just absolutely used to love being around him. Now, tomorrow, we've lined up a great doubleheader for the premiere of NBA Sundays here on ABC Sports. First, Allen Iverson of the Sixers taking on Jason Kidd of the Nets, and then Tim Duncan leads the Spurs against the Kings. NBA Sunday starts tomorrow on ABC. Wow, I'm going to call up Brad Nestle. Maybe give me some autographs. <laughs> give me Tim Duncan's autograph, <laughs> and maybe he can give me an autograph from Chris Webber. I know he's not playing, but I want Webber's autograph. I want him. He's a superstar. Come on, Brad Nestle. Help me out. Four-point lead Marquette on an 11 to 1 run right now. Novak feeling it early. Got knocked down, missed the shot. Jackson the rebound. And there's the rebound and problems. There's the rebound and problems that Louisville is concerned about. Rick Patino, that's all he kept talking to me yesterday on the phone and today in the locker room. He said, I'm really worried about their toughness and their rebounding. And the toughness comes from Jackson. Look at this man, child. I mean, he is big and strong. 6'10", 260. Jumper from the corner, no for Diener. Tried to save it and get a timeout, but he couldn't get it done. Louisville gets the ball, and Diener still hasn't reappeared. There he is. I'll tell you one thing. You know, when you think of Tom Creed and the turnaround and what he has done here, he's one of the rising stars. The big question is, will they be able to keep him? There's going to be a lot of people coming after this guy. And I know they've done all they can. They treat them like royalty here. Of course, the AD gave a new contract last year. But his phone will be ringing. Yeah. Trust me. Stone on the drive. Good aggressive move, but he missed the shot. And we've got more contact underneath. And this call is going against Marquette. Terry Sanders picks up the foul. Here's Tom Crean. Just his fourth season at Marquette. And just his fourth season, Dick, as a college head coach. Conference USA. Coach of the year last year, took him to the tournament last year, and obviously they're headed back, and they're looking at a really high seed this year. Well, I'll tell you one thing, he's got a win already at Cincinnati, and that's a plus of league play. As you look at Dean, he can shoot the jump shot. He's from, got seven. Yeah, from out of New Jersey. He and Garcia really are future players here that are going to have great careers at Louisville. That's one thing that we've got to talk about. This is the number two team in the country, starting two freshmen in Dean and Garcia. Jackson from the corner. Stone might have gotten a finger on that shot, and here come the Cardinals on the run. Dean, Luke Whitehead, and he'll lay it in. Well, Whitehead speaks out in transition, but on the other side, Rick Pitino will allow Jackson, with his great strength, to shoot that perimeter shot. Back to a tie at 13 here in Milwaukee. That's the way it's supposed to be. I mean, Louisville, Marquette, both two at a creme de la creme right now. I mean, it's hard to say that and not believe Cincinnati's not up on top. Yeah. Well, this league is going to take year. And in the seven first years. seven years, Cincinnati won the regular season title every single year. Not this year, though, the way that Marquette and Louisville are playing, unless the Bearcats really get hot. Tom Crean into Marquette, tied with Louisville at 13 midway through the first half. Makes me feel like the road is my playground. Wow. Wow. Camry SE. More standard features, same low price. Ever see a black diamond? I want my stones, Mr. Fate. I'm not going to be able to do that. The stones are not what you think they are. Break out the heat. Rated R. Starts Friday, February 28th. Some say he's still out wandering these hills, looking for his lost head. True story. Okay, time to go to bed. 
for when you need it most. Uh-oh. Our longest lasting Energizer Max ever. What was that? Energizer Max. Do you have the bunny inside? Hey, it's me. Listen, I'm an office depot, and Chuck here has some great ideas about how we can get better organized. You know, improve our work process, avoid stepping on each other's toes, just stop doing the same job twice. You're at office depot? Yeah. Office Depot sells office products to more of the world than anyone, so we know how to help you get better organized. Office Depot, what you need, what you need to know. More than half a million people have taken the free double check challenge at H&R Block. Those that overpaid got more back, an average of $1,300. Have us double check your past tax return, free. Intimidated? Leave it in the trunk of your car with your tennis shoes. The Nissan Open. Coverage begins Thursday night. The PGA Tour on ABC. As Dick alluded to, Marquette University has a tremendous history of college basketball, including the 1977 NCAA championship under Al McGuire when they beat North Carolina in the championship game. They lost seven games during the season, but they won when it mattered the most. They were led by a couple of terrific players. Butch Lee and Bo Ellis were both members of the Marquette team, but I have as a public service announcement to point out that one of the losses Marquette suffered in 1977 <laughs> was to the University of Detroit, Detroit. coached by Dickie V. They lost right here in Milwaukee in the Mecca, right? You beat yeah. Al McGuire. We won 21 in a row. I had some great kids. I couldn't mess them up. Terry Tyler, John Long, Terry Durant. And by the way, I want to wish my best to my assistant, David Gaines, then, who had a heart attack this week and is in a hospital in Las Vegas. Smokey, we wish you nothing but the best, my friend, in a recovery. He spoke to Smokey yesterday, and he's stable, and he's doing well. Nice look into the corner to Dean, who's had the hot hand early. A miss here, but a great rebound inside by Stone. Missed the putback. Boy, it's a scrap underneath for every rebound, isn't it? Joe Chapman into the game for the Golden Eagles. Knocked away. Louisville forces the turnover. They've got a three on two. Great post defense to deny the ball inside the Jackson goal by Louisville. Great block out there by Marquette as a team, and Diener comes up with a rebound. They really work on an area. They work on it hard, and so the time is, though, and I have to say, look at him shoot the jumper, man. Mr. Novak can flat out shoot the J. Second three of the game, and Marquette back on top. Louisville shooting often. Marquette getting the two from Novak. Louisville averages making nine threes a game. It's always been a staple for Rick Pitino. Not our man-to-man -man defense came out of the zone. They got to get Gaines a little bit motion. He's got great size on Diener. 6-6, but Diener takes it away. Gaines gets it back, and we've got a push going against Reese Gaines. He's called for the foul. You know, one of the real areas where players have a dilemma is playing without the basketball, trying to get free. How to utilize screens to run your man into a screen. See right there, they missed him, though. They missed him. Now he's just drifting to the perimeter. Stan, an easy guy to play as a guy that doesn't move. But he made two good cuts, and they didn't get him the ball. He just drifted to the bench right now with his second foul. So that is going to dramatically change the look for Louisville with Gaines, their senior, their All-American, their floor leader going out. And right now looking... At the personnel on the floor, it's going to be Bryant Northern who has checked in, number three for Louisville, a former walk-on, but don't let that uh, alter your perception of him. He's a terrific player and gives them as much energy and defense as any player on their team. Well, what about the threes that he knocked out yeah. against Kentucky when they were in big trouble in the first half? They off the bench and drilled two big threes and sparked them to an unbelievable comeback. I mean, they came back and blew Kentucky out of the second half. Nice pass. Dartez to Taekwon Dean for another three, and Louisville has tied it up. What a great job of going inside, outside, utilizing the principle of bringing the ball to the post and then bringing it to the opposite side to the open shooter. Dean, who's an excellent shooter. He's got 10. Miles knocks the pass away. Merritt gets it back. And the foul is going against Kendall Dartez of Louisville. I tell you, do a great job of bringing the ball to the post. They're going to bring the ball to the inside. You're going to watch it right here. Freeze it right there. Now he's going to look opposite. Right here is where the pass is going to go. Defense comes to the ball. There's the opposite look. 
They work on that in practice, look opposite because people flow to the basketball and wide open. A genius in coaching. And I use that term, believe me when I say, the man is a genius. He covers every concept. He's a great practice coach. He believes in great scouting reports, analyzing film, and I'll tell you every detail. You saw it in the locker room before the yeah. game. He covers every detail. Now they worked twice yesterday. Coach Patino told us before the game they had an offensive practice in the morning and then a defensive practice in the afternoon. But as he told you before the game, rebounding his number one concern coming into this game against Marquette. Matter match it up. Novak misses a three. He's two for four. And the two he's missed, there. the bad shots. The two that he has missed, he didn't have open looks. You've got to understand what an open look is when you're a shooter. Wayne Wade back in the game for Marquette and Karen Bradley has taken the place of Travis Diener at the point for the Golden Eagles. He's a big time scorer. He's had some injuries, had a knee injury. Come out of Houston, Texas. Scored big time on a high school level, Bradley. Wade, a quiet start. Couple of points. Gartez, no. Look at the rebound by Wade getting up there at 6 5. And that shows another part of his game, but he's going to use that driving ability. Oh. A block is the call. Dean cannot believe it. Thought he had position. Number two on Taekwon Dean. Well, Sam Croft with the call. Rick Pitino can't believe it. The kid made a great defensive play. Poor call right here. We're going to see the change in direction. This one goes to the home team. This one goes to the veteran player. Oh, there's no doubt about a charge. I mean, he ran him down. He beat him to the spot. He beat him to the spot defensively. There's a misconception that if you move, as you look at Patino look and Green. Look at the intensity on both of these guys. Well, but look at their hairstyles. How do they keep that hair? <laughs> I'm jealous, man. How do they keep that hair? Wow. Wayne Wade to the line. That's down the first. See, I've seen your... I've seen your bobblehead. Look at this. When you ah. keep the hair, you get hair on the bobblehead. This yeah. is the Tom Crean bobblehead. Oh, you see my bobblehead? Where'd you see my bobblehead? Oh, right here you saw my bobblehead? <laughs> oh, you saw my bobblehead. I didn't know Wait. you saw my bobblehead. This started <laughs> off, at, this was a Tom Crean story. When did it become a Dick Vitale story? The moment I arrived at <laughs> <in> the gym. <laughs> <laughs> well, there we go. Now it's all out in the open. Well, it's Tom Crean bobblehead night here Thursday against Charlotte. Dean staying in the game with two fouls, misses the shot, and now D'Artez is called for the foul, his second. So three Louisville players already, each with two fouls. Hey, Dan, that was a good call. He definitely pushed off to try to get the edge. And you're not going to get away with that on a baseline. If there's Dean with the long-range shot, now you're going to watch a little push-off from the weak side. He definitely pushed off, number one, no doubt about it. He got the little shove before he went up for the rebound. And you're not going to get away. Right there, Ter Terry Jones right on the call. Terry Sanders at the line and out for Marquette. D'Artez sits down with two. Gaines is sitting down with two. Dean is playing with two. And Rick Pitino is happy for all that depth that he's got right now. He does have depth. He goes to that bench. He can bring a lot of people in. But also Marquette utilizes the bench well. Lane violation on the free throw. So Sanders will get to shoot the front end again. That was a good call, though. I really believe that Terry Moore was right on that call and had that sucker nailed. I mean, you can't push off on that baseline and get away with that. And Sanders makes up for the miss. He's a veteran player, got a lot of experience. They lost the one guy, the rebounder, who transferred, was named captain, O'Darkney Blanks. Yeah. He transferred down to UNLV. It's one of the amazing things about this Marquette team is they lost better than 50% of their scoring and rebounding from last year. And this was thought to be maybe a little bit of a rebuilding year, but look at where they are right now at 18 and 3. Yeah, but they didn't lose three, and they didn't lose Wade. <laughs> and they didn't lose Wade. <laughs> look at the effort defensively. But this crowd has got everybody pushed up. Merritt with the foul. Now, are the officials calling it tight, or is this game just very physical right now? Well, it's a very physical game, and they're blowing the whistle. I think they're doing a good job. You think about winning streaks and environments. You know, right now, you look at Oklahoma's got 34 in a row. Kelvin Sampson, Western Kentucky's got 33 in a row, and Marquette at 28, and then Duke 25. Next week, Duke plays Maryland on Wednesday. Last team to beat Duke at home, and Cameron Crazies was Maryland That's with Juan right. Dixon. Duke, Duke's got a tough one at Virginia tonight. There's the winning streak. Marquette, the third longest in the nation, and as we mentioned, the last loss here with the Bradley Center two years ago to Louisville in triple overtime. Nice pass. Yes. Going over Miles to miss. Jackson looking for the rebound, got his leg held. Miles gets it back, and this is some kind of battle underneath the basket. I think Miles is one guy that can flat out rebound. He's a guy that gives him a good rebounder from the power forward slot. 
Bradley at the point for the Golden Eagles. Here is Wade trying to take Dean. Wayne Wade will let the game come to him. He won't force the offense. I said have done a great job containing him. They really have. Bradley from the wing. No. Miles another rebound. I'll tell you, Rick Bettino will let all these other people shoot as long as he can keep Dean, keep Wade away from going to the goal. A block is called underneath the basket. Count the basket. And send Stone to the line as well. Marvin Stone taking the ball up strong. Came out of Alabama with a big-time reputation. They thought he was going to be a big star at Kentucky. There he is now going to take it right at Jackson. Lays it on. A block is called immediately. Look at Terry Moore. I mean, there's no doubt. Look at the eyes. He makes that call with authority. Uh, Townsend back into the game. A uh, sophomore from Chicago. 6'7 guy can shoot it. That's the second foul on Robert Jackson. The reason that so many teams are winning at home now, we're seeing domination at home. I believe or right here what we see here, the fan frenzy that started with the Cameron Crazies now is all over America. 19,000, maybe more here, enjoying this battle in Conference USA. Based on everything we've talked about, your long-term goals, here's where I think you should be. Start exploring some alternative investments. It's a good time for you to think about more municipals. Rolling over that 401k. Let her change her major, Al. My daughter's changed hers four times. And if you do proceed with plans to expand your business, we can even help you with the financing. You can do my financing, too. Keep talking. Building wealth begins with a relationship, and our financial advisors know it. UBS Payne Weber. At BASF, we don't make the mattress. We make it softer. We don't make the boots. We make them drier. We don't make the car, we make it more colorful. We don't make the snowboard, we make it stronger. At BASF, we don't make a lot of the products you buy, we make a lot of the products you buy better. BASF. Yo, we gonna eat? What? Eddie up! up. <laughs> That's not a lot of loot. Watch me work. Your meal, your choices with McDonald's Dollar Menu. Sandwiches, sides, desserts at a price you can handle. Just one dollar each, every day, only at McDonald's. Got a buck? You're in luck. Must be hungry. Just a little bit. <laughs> 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 oh, that's what I'm talking about. Parfait, s'il vous plaît. Say what? It's French dog, don't worry about it. This is my bridge. This is my building. And this is my truck. For people that care about getting the job done right, we built the Toyota Tundra better from the ground up. Hi. Fall in love this Valentine weekend with Julia Roberts and Hugh Grant. Can I stay a bit longer? Stay forever. Notting Hill, ABC Tonight, 8 37 30 Central. John Saunders and Digger Phelps in the studio. Texas taking on Nebraska. That's Bodica with the miss. James Thomas cleans it up. Oh, big offensive rebound. He had 10 points, 12 rebounds for Texas. Texas rolls on to another win. Mouton with 24 points. Very efficient from the field. Now, no question, the Longhorns, one of the elite teams in America. You and I are going to see them at Oklahoma. It'll be senior day for the Sooners on March the 8th right here on ABC. Reese Gaines, uh, the senior All-American candidate, for Louisville, you mentioned from Madison, Wisconsin. He considered going to Wisconsin. Marquette was not on his short list, but this Marquette program has changed a lot in the last few years. He told me before the game that Marquette would have been on his list if Palm Creed had gotten the job a lot earlier. Yeah. Maryland was on his list, averaging 18.5 a game, sitting on a pine right now as an assistant coach. And certainly, Tom Creed rather see him sitting there. Rick Pitino doesn't like to see him there. 1,741 point, 80%. I'll tell you, kick shoot three throws at 80%, 38% from the trifecta. Wade with four points so far, kicks it out to Bradley. Line drive is short. Wade with a rebound. Tough baseline, Jay. Look at Miles with one hand ripped down the ball. I think Wade forced that shot. They have done a phenomenal job of negating Wade. They've taken away his driving ability. He's getting no open look. Scott Merritt with an outstanding defensive play for the Golden Eagles to force another Louisville turnover. You know, you talk about player of the year in a conference, it's going to come down to Wade or certainly yep. games. 
Well, I don't think many people would feel they both deserve consideration for some, some National Player of the Year awards. I know Dwayne Wade certainly getting that kind of consideration. I tell you, I like T.J. Ford, pound for pound, inch for inch. I think he's the best in America. Bounds are looking for Merritt inside. Backing down Marvin Stone. Jump hook. Yeah. That was a big time shot. That was not an easy post move. Defense was right in his face. Every shot is being challenged here this afternoon. These teams really get after it defensively and reflect the personalities of their coaches. Aggressive styles. Merritt with four. Marquette back in the lead by one. The Cardinals trying to play through some foul trouble here in the first half. Nice runner by Francisco Garcia. Played for an outstanding high school program in New York City, LeBron, St. Raymond. Coached by Gary DeCesar, now in a staff with Jimmy Wing right down in Richmond. First basket of the game for Garcia, who had back-to-back -back games of 23 and 24 points a couple of weeks ago. But as you said earlier, eight threes yeah. against Cincinnati. That's big time for a diaper game. Look at Wade. That is where he is as tough as any player in the country, that pull-up 15-footer. Yeah, if he can get in the three-second area with his ability to put the ball into the deck, he's unstoppable. And he's also fantastic, Dan, when he gets in transition. Yeah. Wayne Wade with six, averaging better than 21, leading Conference USA in score. And that's where Louisville's done a great job defensively in transition, not allowing Wade to get out of the break. Another rebound for Merritt. Marquette doing a pretty good job the last few minutes, keeping the Cardinals off the glass. Well, you know, Merritt's done a great job for them rebounding. He's really had a strong last two, three weeks. A lot of patience, discipline, so important. They got a lot of sets they run. They run so many sets more at depth. Trying to get an isolation, a one-on-one -on -one move. Another pull-up jumper, left it short, Sanders underneath. And there's rebounded again, rebound and rebound and rebound it. You gotta block out and you gotta rebound. If you don't rebound, it's tough to win. Sanders with four, rebounding Rick Pitino's number one concern. The 19,000 fans giving him a standing ovation gotta be a concern for Pitino as well. It is loud in here. You know, Marquette, as you see the jumper come off, and there's the rebound by Marquette. In their 18 wins, they're plus seven in rebounding. In their three losses, they're minus 8.3. So how big is rebounding? And Think how, about that. How big is this game with Marquette nine and one in league play, Louisville eight and one in league play, Terry Sanders as Marquette's getting some production off the bench. Louisville timeout. Good timeout by Rick Pitino. He doesn't want to see a run right here. He's got to come up with a stop. Wayne Wade gave him a big lift. There he is right now. We're going to see the All-American try to work to get into the three-second area. There he is in the paint area, and there's that quick pull-up with the great legs. What makes that possible is his leg strength. Look at the leaders here. Number one and two in this game. Sonny Brown and Finley and Blunt and Santee having a great year as well. Wade is also second of the conference in steals, eighth in field goal percentage, and ninth in assists. And some people are worried, even though he's got eligibility left, that Dwayne Wade might be playing, say, oh, in the NBA next year. We got some NBA action for you tomorrow here on ABC Sports. A doubleheader. Philadelphia against New Jersey. Iverson and Kidd in the early game, and then Tim Duncan and the Spurs take it on the high-flying Sacramento Kings. NBA Sundays on ABC start tomorrow. We got hoops. I'll tell you one thing. You got hoops big time tomorrow when you think about those stars you just mentioned. Iverson and Kidd and Duncan and company. I'll tell you, Wade. Wade to me, as you look at player of the year, on is being held up by many of his fans and friends. Bottom line is, he's got a really his range as a shooter. That's one area of concern in moving to the perimeter at the next level. He is a junior, but he sat out his first year as a partial qualifier. He can get that year back if he graduates on time. So technically, as Wade forces a tie-up, Arrow keeps it with Louisville, technically Dwayne Wade has two more years, potentially, of eligibility here at Marquette. I don't think anybody expects him to play two more years, but Tom Cream would probably settle for one more year. I'll tell you, he'd like to have one more year. One more year might really help elevate his game where he works on that part of his game, shooting the jump shot. He's also a great student, by the way, here. Doing a phenomenal job in the classroom. Just missed the block shot there. Al Haji Mohammed off the bench for Louisville with a bucket, and the Cards back it in three. And there's Louisville trying to utilize their full court pressure. Diener. Yeah. Travis Diener, whose shot has suffered a little bit this year as he has moved to the point. But left open, he is a very good shooter. Kendall D'Artez getting more minutes here today, and he brings the Cardinals back within one with his first basket of the game. D'Artez out of junior college, went to Vincennes Junior College, would have produced a lot of great players. Two guys in particular years ago, Ricky Green of Michigan, and a guy by the name of Bob McAdoo at North Carolina. Okay. My 
Cardinals. Another rebound for Louisville. Cardinals can take the lead. Eric Brown on the drive, and he is fouled. I tell you, Louisville always attacking, attacking, and I didn't think they'd be in a position where they are, sitting at 18 and two in his second year. I knew that he'd have maybe a four-year deal, and his four-year plan it would be unbelievable. What's going to happen on Louisville? But it's so much quicker, and this guy has just real unbelievable magic. He has done a phenomenal job, and as I said earlier, I believe in the decade of 2000s, they're going to be one of the dominant, dominant teams in basketball. Scott Merritt, who's had a good first half, has to sit down, Dick, with his third foul. Yeah, fouls certainly play a big part in games like this. Fouls in special situations at the end of the game. And this is the thing, and you can talk about this, Dick, you have to remember about Louisville. Foul trouble and fatigue tends to hurt other teams more than Louisville because of their depth. If they can get into halftime close, they think they have an advantage in the second half, and the numbers bear that out. The Cardinals have been an extraordinary second-half team so far this season. You're watching ABC Sports Championship Television. Bullseye wins it. Sam Adams Life. The light beer was shockingly great taste. Makes me feel like the road is my playground. Wow! Wow! The Camry SE. NBA Sundays on ABC tip off with a monster doubleheader. Next, Sixers, Spurs, Kings. NBA Sundays on ABC. Tomorrow, we got hoops. Welcome back to Milwaukee. NCAA basketball presented by UBS Payne Weber here on ABC Sports. And a game living up to its advanced billing. Louisville to Marquette. Dwayne Wade living up to his billing, Dick? Yeah, we're going to watch this guy right here. We're going to see, watch Mr. Wade what he does defensively. It's his effort. It's how active he is. We're going to show the All-American right here. See, freezer right there. Now, look, he reaches in, doesn't get the ball, but the effort is there. He's aware. He's aware to give help. Now he's going to rotate all the way over, and look at this here. He goes for the block shot. He goes, look at that hand extension. But he doesn't get it, baby. But at least... When you see an effort like that out of your star, it becomes contagious to all the other people that are wearing that uniform. I asked Tom Crane, tell us one thing that you want America to know about Dwayne Wade if they haven't seen him before. And he talked about just what you did. He said he is as complete a player as there is in college basketball today in all aspects of the game. Well, he's a beautiful kid as well. He really is. He's got great attitude. You know, I want to follow up on a point you made about depth a little bit earlier, Dan. You said something about depth with how many players they have. Louisville feels if they can get to halftime, your foul trouble is going to bother you more than their foul trouble is going to bother them, and your fatigue is going to bother you more than theirs is going to bother them because they got so many bodies. Well, you think about this. They were down 11 to Kentucky. They blow them out in the second half. They were down 16 to Indiana. They blow them out. They went down 12 to Tennessee. They come back to win that on the road. They went down big to Ohio State. They come back and win that game in overtime. I mean, it's incredible the comeback, the cardiac kids down there with the Cardinals. You know, one of the Louisville players, I think it was Gaines, made a comment 
uh, earlier on in the season. He said, Coach Patino told us that getting tired is no longer an option. No, the fatigue <laughs> makes the power of the ball is a saying that is utilized. Let's not forget, though, the great job that Denny Crum did. I think there's a tendency to forget about what he achieved in the 80s was amazing. A couple of NCAA titles in 80 and 86. Jartez giving Rick Pitino some pretty good minutes. He'll go to the line. Yeah, he's doing great minutes. He's getting better and better. You know, you mentioned winning national titles, but what about six Final Fours? I mean, think about that. Jartez to the line. He didn't practice very well earlier in the week, and that's why he did not play very much against St. Louis. Any questions is his tattoo on his right arm. And Rick Pitino said, yeah, I got a question for you. When are you going to practice better so I can put you in the game? We need, <laughs> we need you, big fella. And he's getting some big minutes here today. I tell you, look about the history and you think about basketball and Marquette and Louisville. I think about some of the great players. George Thompson sitting to my right. He does the games on radio for Marquette. He was the first superstar out of New York City. Al McGuire used to go to New York City, man, and get so many great players like Butch Lee, who became player of the year. Come out of the Wick Clinton. That's when it all started, though, with George Thompson, an outstanding scorer who played at Marquette for hours. Marvin Stone back into the game. Joe Chapman just got run over on a screen, and here comes the pressure from Louisville. Marquette practiced against this extensively yesterday, and you can't do it any better than that. That was a wide-open three. Now, that was a great shot when you talk about shot selection. And Dieter, don't forget the play Dieter made to create the opportunity for his buddy Novak. The way they broke that, the way they got the ball up the floor and found the open man is exactly the way Tom Crane was telling him to break it in practice yesterday. And as a coach, when you see execution like that and it's so efficient, it just makes you feel so good. Rebound for Townsend. Stone's got to go to the basketball with a lot more authority. He's not going up strong to the basket. Novak with 11 first-half points for Marquette, coming off 17 of the game against DePaul. Wednesday from the corner, Joe Chapman knocks down a three. Hey, when we think of Rick Pitino and when he started at Kentucky, Pitino's Bombinos. We're seeing Tom Cretas go Cremitos here today, <laughs> baby. Letting threes fly all over, and they love it here at Marquette. Milwaukee was jumping last night. George Carl winning his 13 out of 16. Look at right now. Creates the opportunity. Runs to the three-point line in transition. He runs right to the three-point line. Look at Dieter split the trap. And there's the kick out. Go diagonally in transition now. Teams there. That's part of the running game. Run to the three-point line. If you're Duke, you set a J.J. Redick there. That's right. If you're Marquette, you set a kid like Novak. Yesterday in practice, Dick, when Marquette worked on breaking the Louisville press, Tom Crean had his five starters trying to break the press, and he had seven other players playing defense on the other side. That's great. To try and simulate the kind of pressure and aggressive defense that they're going to see from Louisville. And he figured if they can do it against seven bodies on Friday, they can do it against five bodies on Saturday that's, afternoon. That's a great coaching technique utilized by a lot of coaches. I'll tell you, a guy I respect so much, as you know, is Dick Weiss. Who's Weiss out of the Daily News? He watched practice yesterday with you, and he yeah. said it was the most intense practice he's ever seen a day before a game. It was something else. Loose ball drills, rebounding drills, taking charges. I mean, guys having to line up and get run over by their teammates. That's how you win, my yeah. friend, with discipline, with everybody being unselfish and everybody sacrificing for the benefit of the name on the front of the jersey. That's how you win, and that's what winning coaches do. Guys like Patino and Green and across America, the winners, make sure they convey that to their people. 7-2 run for Marquette in the last couple of minutes. Novak. See, not a good shot. Now, get the yeah. ball up. He had his two that he missed, he took bad shots. Yeah. Guys were in his face. And the three where he set his feet, he knocked him down. You got to identify a good shot. Shot clock winding down, and a timeout is called. Rick Pitino, I believe, wanted to travel. Did Diener call a timeout, and was it given? It's a travel to me. He's laying it's on a travel. floor. Yeah, it's a travel. Yes, sir. He has overruled. Yes, sir. A good call there. Referees huddle up, make sure they get it right. I think Diener's in some pain. He is in some pain. Remember, he's playing with a back problem. There it is now. As soon as he goes to the deck like that, that's a walking violation. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. There's another look from up on. There it is. Now he's going to go to the deck. As soon as he goes to the deck, you lift your pivot foot, you rotate. It's a walking violation. Good call by Ted Helen. I like the idea that the officials got together and made the right call. So Louisville gets it back. Nearing the final minute of the first half, we have seen a number of lead changes back and forth. 
And we get a foul against Novak of Marquette. Coming up of the half, it's the Office Depot Halftime Report with John Saunders and Digger Phelps. A top 10 upset. A number of ranked teams have already lost here today. So tune in for that. And will the Kentucky streak continue? You know, Seton Hall, for example, gets a big win today over Pittsburgh. And the bottom line is Rick Pacino's kids got a big win on the road where they blew out Seton Hall. Louis Orr has got to feel happy the way Seton Hall is playing right now. And then Syracuse, a kid that doesn't get any credit. We talk about the influential diaper dandies in America. What about McNamara knocking down a trifecta to win that game for Syracuse over the Fighting Irish? Uh, the Big East, wild as always. Connecticut went on the road, and they lost to Villanova. You'll see highlights of all those games and all the ranked action that's going on this afternoon with John and Digger coming up a minute and 10 seconds from now. But nobody's playing better than Kentucky. I'll tell you, their defense, I know today I heard somebody say they only won by 11. They only won by 11. <laughs> Timeout called by Marquette. Couldn't get the ball in. Three-point lead for the Golden Eagles late in the first half. This Thursday and Friday, join ABC Sports for late-night highlights of early-round action from the Nissan Open. Then catch live third-round action next weekend, the PGA Tour on ABC Sports. I know I heard Dick some Marquette fans talking before the game. They were watching out-of-town games, and they were saying, okay, so Notre Dame lost, so Pittsburgh lost. So Duke lost because Duke lost earlier in the week. And they're starting to think about how their team with a win today might climb even higher than they are right now, number 11. They've got a game on ESPN2 against Charlotte on Thursday. You and I can't wait to go to Freedom Hall on the 27th. But check out how many of the top 10 teams on this list have already lost so far this week. Yeah, Mark, it's got a chance to really make some damage and certainly to jump up there with a win over Louisville, no doubt about it. Hey, you speak about the state of Wisconsin. I mean, when you think about Wisconsin, you don't think about basketball being so dominant. But right now, you talk about Wisconsin. They're leading the Big Ten, had the big win over Indiana. Bo Ryan, what a job he's done. And I'll tell you another guy, right here in Milwaukee, the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee. The, the Panthers, man. Bruce Pearl is doing a fantastic job. They're leading the Horizon Conference. I mean, there's bad, yep. great basketball in this state. Well, let me guarantee everybody, all of a sudden, when the office pools start in a few weeks, in Wisconsin-Milwaukee, you know, if they win that league, which is a good league. They want Marquette. That's a, they do want Marquette. It's a very competitive league. Everybody's going to be an expert picking Wisconsin-Milwaukee to knock off a team or two in the tournament. There's some great basketball being played in the Horizon. Oh, yeah, there's no doubt. You know, last year, that probably left out of the tournament with 25 wins. Second foul on Terry Sanders. And the foul trouble definitely something to consider for both coaches. But again, it's going to be more of a concern for Tom Green because he doesn't have quite the number of bodies that Rick Pitino has, although Tom Green's bench has been terrific today. Marvin Stone, you saw a big improvement in his numbers as a Cardinal compared to a Wildcat. Now he is playing more. He's getting more minutes because Louisville had a, a gaping hole inside, and Marvin Stone's done a nice job filling that hole. And there's the comparison to UK and the University of Louisville. You know, his work ethic wasn't supreme down at University of Kentucky yeah. and really has no one to blame for himself. He went to Louisville, and he really turned it up. It was his last stop, and he knew that I have to really respond, and he has responded. He just has to be a little bit more active or offensive and move it off the ball. Here by Eric Brown, and he jams it home. And all of a sudden, Louisville's back within a point as now the Golden Eagles can hold it for the final shot of the half. And they get the steal and get the layup. You ready for this? It's hard to believe. Against St. Louis, they didn't have one steal. Can you believe it? Yes, Rap. Did they have one steal against St. Louis? Brown with that score is an interesting story. I'm going to lay this one on you as you see the drive on a baseball. You might have to save it for the second half. Got to get a shot off, and they can't do it. Good defense by Louisville. There's only one player on the team from Louisville from the state of Kentucky, Mr. Brown. And there's only one at Kentucky from the state of Kentucky. Wow. Also, out of 20 players, only two from Kentucky. Recruiting, you better recruit. Halftime reports coming up. NCAA basketball presented by UBS Payne Weber on ABC Sports. Brought to you by Sam Adams Light. Shockingly great taste and Nike basketball. We'll be back with the Office Depot Halftime Report after this message and a word from our ABC stations. So, anything I should say? Center in Milwaukee, a crowd of about 19,000 here to see number 11 Marquette taking on number two Louisville. 
in a February battle for supremacy of Conference USA. Whoever wins this game will have the lead in the American Division and in the conference. They play again in 12 days at Louisville on ESPN2. We'll look at the first half stats, and as you'd imagine, very even. I think Rick Pitino's got to be happy that the rebounds are even. These are the Nike Shocks first half stats. Steve Novak with a big first half, and again, Louisville used 11 players. Reese Gaines only played 10 minutes because of foul trouble. I think Louisville's got to feel pretty good going to the second half. Well, you know, Gaines certainly didn't play a lot of minutes, and here you are in a situation with a chance to win, and that's a positive. On the other side, though, you look at Marquette, they have a chance to win, and they have sure. not gotten an All-American performance out of Dwayne Wade. Wade's the kind of kid that could break open a game with his unbelievable spurt ability. He can put on a spurt. He's explosive. They got to get him out in transition a little. We got to go with man. These teams are really tough. They're legitimate, legitimate basketball programs and teams that play on both sides of the floor, defensively and offensively. Remember, Marquette beat Louisville three times last season, but that was a much different Louisville team that won 19 games, went to the NIT. They've already got 18 wins, and they're certainly going to the NCAA tournament. The question is, how high will the seed be? This is a, a much different team with Stone coming in. And Garcia and Dean, the freshman, and Marquette has rebuilt, turned over about half their roster as well. Tom Crean has four freshmen that he uses in his rotation. But all that notwithstanding, as you mentioned, you've got two of the class programs in America right now. Nice screen up on top by Jackson. They've got to get him involved on the post area. They've got to get Jackson some touches inside. There's Wade. Nice feed. There's Jackson. Hey, did you coach? A little bit. <laughs> Once in a while. Gotta bring it in, and Mr. Wade made that happen with his driving ability. Show it again. Another part of his game. Averages better than three assists a game. Last year, Wade, as Louisville gets free inside, Garcia on the feed from Miles. Last year, Wade led Marquette in scoring, rebounding, assists, blocks, and steals. He led him in everything. Well, you know what they did in the last possession? They inverted. They took Garcia and rotated him from the perimeter to the low box to take advantage of his great size over Dina. Merritt playing with three fouls, misses the jumper. Dean loses it to Wade, who gets the ball and calls the timeout. That was something that Denny Crum used to do that all the time. Invert his guards. Invert his guards to the baseline. We'll step aside early in the second half. They've traded a basket, so Marquette is still up by one. Jellin'? No telling how much I'm gelling. You gelling? You know I'm gelling. Hey, Ellen, you gelling? I'm gelling like a felon. You want some melon? Nah, but hey, I'm like mud gelling. I'm so jelling. Nice. Are you gelling yet? Dr. Scholl's massaging gel insoles are made from the softest gel ever created. If you and your shoes don't feel outrageously comfortable, you get your money back. Guaranteed. I'm gelling. You're not gelling. You're so not gelling. Are you gelling yet? Dr. Scholl. Look, feel, do better. Basketball presented by UBS Payne Weber on ABC Sports. Brought to you by the Mitsubishi Outlander. Prepare for what's down the road. Are you in? And Dr. Scholl's massaging gel insoles. Are you gelling yet? 
NCAA champs as the Warriors under Al McGuire 26 years ago. Now the Golden Eagles and headed back up the ladder. Let's take a look at Louisville's offense here, Dick. Well, you know, you Louisville during the Denny Cremary used to always rotate their guards, the big guards, down inside. Freeze it right here. See, right here they're going to take advantage. 6-7 to seven Garcia against the 5-11 Dina inside is a no match. And they were able to get him inside. They invert him, bring him to the baseline, and he converts and scores. And the problem is, I guess, who do you put Diener on? He's the smallest guy on the floor. He's not blessed with tremendous quickness, and he's got a bad back. If you don't want him on games, and if Dean is too quick, I mean, Diener's got to cover somebody. Well, see, right now, they're doing a little matchup situation. They change defenses constantly. Diener on Garcia again as Stone breaks free from Merritt, and Louisville's back in the lead. Stone really makes himself available at time. It's hard to believe when you watch him play that he can go a game and go 0 for 2 yep. against the likes of St. Louis. He's got five. Wade, nice kick to Townsend, who passed up the jumper. Diener finds a wide open Wade in the corner. Three no good. Rebound Stone. Louisville on the run. Three on one. Garcia on the feed from Gaines and a block by Townsend. Crowd wanted an earlier travel. Once again, we see Wade come up empty on that jump shot, wide open. He's got to be able to work on that area of his game and make that perimeter shot. We're going to watch Stone right now taking the ball strong to the basket. Nice little jump step. Might have had a little walk right there. Might have had a little walk right there. Might have missed a little, a little shuffle right <laughs> there. I can even see that with one eye. Ellis Miles having a little shoe problem over on the bench. He's just pulled an insert out of his shoe. I'm going to call him shoes. Al yeah. McGuire laid that on a player from Michigan State one year when they were running for the national title. He called them shoes, man. Okay. Al McGuire, boy, I miss that guy. And I know he would love, he would absolutely love this Marquette team. Kendall D'Artez, who was very good in the first half, will replace Ellis Miles, who's going to get a new insert for that shoe. It's great to see Hank Raymond, a guy that was so close to Al. Many people would say that he did the practice and Al handled the game. Al said, I used to put the bouquet on, man, and put it on the carnation. I used to let Hank handle all the other parts of coaching. He did a great job. Jarris here as well. Yeah, also uh, John, Willie, yeah. Willie Jones saw him in the house, the great superstar, the Green Bay Packer fame. <laughs> Willie Davis, man. Willie Davis. Did you say Willie Jones? I'm just listening. Oh, Willie Davis, man. <laughs> Willie Davis was a third defensive end. One of the 19,000, maybe the biggest crowd they've ever had for Marquette basketball in this building in the house today against arch rival Louisville. And the fact that Louisville lost on Wednesday did not dampen the spirits of this Marquette crowd at all. Here's a three from the corner for Garcia again over the outstretched Travis Diener. And the Marquette may have a bit of a coverage problem right now with Garcia. Well, a matchup problem with great size that he possesses Garcia. But he's a Diener trying to answer. Got it! He says, go ahead, big fellow, try to answer this. Anything you can do, I can do better. Anything you can do, I can do better. Diener with seven. Part of the Diener Conference USA family. He's got a cousin at St. Louis, a cousin at DePaul. Stone on the drive over Merritt. Offensive foul, Marvin Stone. Yeah, Stone a little bit out of control. I see Diener's one of those tough kids. He's just a, such an outstanding complimentary player. You're going to watch Marvin Stone now take the ball to the basket. Look at the little guy, Diener. Yep. There's Diener. There's Diener. Number two on Marvin Stone, and now Diener's going to try to break the press. Nice job. Wade open. They're going to give him the jumper. Moves in, uses the glass. Rebound, Golden Eagles. And we got a timeout called again by Marquette. Townsend had the ball, but he was falling out of bounds, so he uses another Marquette timeout. So we've got a couple of early timeouts here in the second half. Again, as they trade leads back and forth, Bob Valvano, who does the, uh, the radio for Louisville, came up to me at halftime, and he said at all five of the television timeouts, in the first half, it was either a tie game or a one-point game, and that continues here. And there's Bobby V. We got Dickie V. We got Bobby V. Well, we got Bobby Valvano in the house. Certainly, you think of Jim Valvano as well and the Jimmy V Foundation for Cancer Research, which has been unbelievable, but still not enough. I mean, millions and millions have been raised, but if anybody's interested in want to help, so all I got to do is call 1-800-4-JIMMY-V, and let's raise money, 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 so we can end this battle with cancer. We wish certainly our best to Jim Calhoun. Want to see him get on the sideline as he's recovering from prostate cancer. 
Ball back into the Golden Eagles here, down by one. Good look inside for Jackson, but they swarm him right away. As soon as he touches the ball, there's the double team down in the low box to get the ball out of his hands. That have been 15 points a game for Jackson. Tough shot for Diener. Rebound Merritt going right back up, and he's blocked from behind by Ellis Miles. There's Merritt getting up on the glass with the offensive rebound and then attacking the basket. Now watch this right there. Here's Dean with that little jump shot. He pulls up, but now we're going to watch the offensive rebound. There's Merritt. And he's going to take it right to the goal. Merritt is very active here today. He's going for the rim again, and he draws the foul. And he created that foul opportunity. Took it right at Stone. Number three on created. Mark Stone. He created the opportunity by attacking the basket. I love guys that play aggressively. Here he is attacking. There's Stone reaching in. I mean, as soon as you reach in, that's a silly foul. That's a silly foul for a veteran player. I mean, you're not getting away with that. There's no way. Merritt, a junior from nearby Wauwatosa, Wisconsin, 6'10", 245. So he's got the body to mess around down low with the guys like Stone and Miles, and he has been very active here today. He's trying to put on a maybe a sack like Willie Davis did in his prime when he played with the Packers and Vince Lombardi. One of the great, great names of all time in the NFL, Mr. Lombardi. And you notice it ends in A-E-I-O-U. I know. <laughs> I know. Believe me, when you want to make a point, you make a point. There's, I do. There's, there's no ambiguity. I'm so shy and introverted. <laughs> oh, we got a great one here, we Dan. Do. What we a do. great environment. Two teams battling for supremacy, trying to replace Cincinnati, who dominated Conference USA over the last seven years. Both of these teams have already beaten Cincinnati this year. Marquette at Cincinnati, Louisville at home. So they both have a game with the Bearcats still to come and a game with each other. Louisville's got to make up for that loss to St. Louis, and what a place it would be to make up for it would be here. Early in the second half, here at the Bradley Center in Milwaukee, Dan Schulman to Dick Vitale with you, NCAA basketball, presented by UBS Payne Weber here on ABC Sports. The two top teams in Conference USA right now, second-ranked Louisville and 11th-ranked Marquette. First meeting of the season, Golden Eagles beat them all three times they played the Cardinals last year. Louisville had won 17 in a row until they lost Wednesday at St. Louis by a point. Marquette has won 28 in a row at home, the third longest active streak in the country. They go to man-to-man, -man, they utilize Dean now, playing Dean. Wade got it blocked, got it back, got fouled. I think this is the toughest situation that Wade's had in terms of getting scoring opportunities. They have done a great job in their preparation, Louisville, as you look at the standings in the American division. And they're getting rid of that. And they want to get rid of that in the, in the Big East as well. Get rid of those divisions and let everybody play each other at least once. For example, Marquette doesn't play Memphis. Didn't play them last year either. That'll be rectified yeah. next year. They're going to a 14-team alignment where everybody plays each other once, and they should do that in the Big East as well. The, the downside, and I agree with you, but the downside is then you won't play as many teams home and home as you do right now. For instance, these two teams may not play twice next year. Exactly, but at least you have a true representative when you play everybody once. Yeah. For example, Notre Dame doesn't play St. John's, Philadelphia, Miami. How do you have a true representative of the Big East Championship? More on the conference and these two great teams when we come back. Back and forth they've gone. A little history lesson when we come back. Marquette up by one here in Milwaukee. So, tell me, where do you see yourself at age 65? Not working. Working. I love to work. Spoiling my grandchildren. I start in the Greek islands. I can't think that far ahead. And make my way up through Italy. Small vineyard, 25 acres, maybe top of a hill. Just a view that goes on forever. Really pretty. Lots of dogs. Building wealth begins with a relationship, and our financial advisors know it. UBS Payne Weber. Sammy Light, I'll be right out. Woo! That's what I'm talking about! Woo! 
just tasted new Sam Adams Light. The light beer with shockingly great taste. Bang. with a ring of cheese baked inside the crust now has zesty cheddar cheese around the outer rim for a toasted crunch. Get a stuffed crust pizza for $9.99 or go for the gold for $1 more. Stuffed crust gold, new at Pizza Hut. It's official, ABC Thursday is the hottest night on television. Try margarine. Are you hot? A search for America's sexiest people, ABC Thursday. John Saunders and Dicker Phelps in the studio. Indiana taking on Wisconsin. Wilkinson will get the dish to Kirk Penny. Knocks down a three. And then Devin Harris with the law to Tucker. Wisconsin up by 10, Digger. Big win for Wisconsin. Indiana now has to go to Iowa and Illinois on the road. And drop into five and six. Indiana really could be a big day for basketball in the state of Wisconsin if Marquette going to pull off a win over Louisville. Hey, we talked about the All-Americans. They both started well, Dick, but they've been quiet. But as Gaines opened up the game with a three, having a tough time getting good looks, right now goes to the deck. Defense really aware of him at every moment. And the same with Wade. He started by banking one off the glass. But since then, they have really denied him the basketball. And he's going to move a little bit more without the ball. That's an area. They're holding there. They got away with a hold. Primetime players, baby, got to step up. Usually, primetime guys like the last five minutes. I don't know Wade excels yeah. at the end of the game. Gaines had a huge second half against St. Louis, even though Louisville lost. They had 31 points in the second half against the Billikens, and he had 20 of them, but they still turned it over, missed a free throw, and gave it away late against St. Louis. Tomorrow, from the executive producers of Chicago, comes a world premiere motion picture starring Matthew Broderick. Don't miss Merrick Wilson's The Music Man, ABC Tomorrow at 7 Eastern, 6 Central. There he is, stepping up, as you said, as Gaines knocks down the three in Louisville. Up the deuce, Gaines now with seven. Wade has six, both well below the lead. It's guy to play. Dean to Townsend, but he misses. They opened up the court. They attacked the pressure full court. Eric Brown runs down the air and pass in the corner. You got to make that layup in transition when you're attacking pressure. That's frustrating. To Tom Green, you work on that part of your game, attacking the press. They get the layup and they come up empty. Running games off the screen. Got a switch now with Jackson. Wide open. Tyquan Dean misses the three. And Dean with another rebound. Head up at all times. Look at Dean a few young kids. He's head up at all times. Finds Wade, and he's fouled on the drive. If it's Dartez, it's number four, and it is, I believe. Kendall Dartez has just picked up his fourth foul. You know, we're starting to see Wade now attack the basket. Take a look at Dwayne Wade. Here's the superstar. Here's the attacking. That's what he's going to do. He does that his best when he's attacking the basket, not thinking about the perimeter jump shot. Kendall Dartez hearing it from the crowd. And returning the favor, as he and the crowd get it on one another, that'll be four on D'Artez, and Otis George is getting set to check into the game. He is going to be the 12th different player that Rick Pitino has used in this game. I tell you, he goes to that bench. He's not afraid. you got to practice, and you know you earn your minutes in practice with Rick. There's no doubt about it. you better practice as Wade makes the first free throw. Hey, you think about overall win streaks. Kentucky's leading the nation with 14 in a row, and they're followed by Marquette and Weber State, both with 10. Xavier's got eight, College of Charleston eight. Big game tonight. You want to go down there. Get on a plane and go down there to Philadelphia to see Brown and Penn. Brown beats Brown beat Princeton the other day. Let's give a little a salute to a Glenn Miller. Glenn Miller, Glenn Miller yeah. deserves some love. The coach of Brown. They'll be Princeton. They're unbeaten. This yeah. term is down the model. Knocks Xavier up uh, another notch. They beat Rhode Island today. And David West had another monster game. 26 points and 16 rebounds. Another potential player of the year candidate. Coming off that 47 and 18 he had against Peyton. How about this one here? Tied at 45 between Marquette and Louisville. Not tied anymore. Back to back buckets for these games. See, now we're starting to see the big time players want the ball. Games, or Wade rather, finds Novak, who had some big moments. 11 points in the first half. He's calling for it, but Jackson doesn't see him. Diener spins, takes the hit, misses the shot. And who's it going to be? It's going to be Marquette basketball as Diener again, slow to get up. He is getting crushed in the paint. 
I tell you one thing, we're starting to see Gaines assert himself a little bit more offensively, and Wade has got to do the same. Sam Proff having a little conversation with Tom Green. I think Tom Green's having a conversation with Sam Croft. <laughs> Drop to do it most of, most of the listen. Boy, these coaches will get on you. As intense as any coaches in the country. Get a little isolation here. A little one-on-one. -on -one. Clear out. Let this guy go. Let him do a shake and bake. Put it to the deck. Let him go to the basket. No dice screens. Try and get him free. Jackson handles the pass and lays it in. So, you know, he created that again. In an isolation, a one-on-one -on -one for Wade. They gave help. As soon as they gave help, he has the great vision. And he finds the wide open yeah. Jackson. He yeah. is not a point guard, but Dick, he makes everybody better because of all the different things that he does. And so the game's right there. That was created by the penetration of game. The great size. Looks over the top of the defense. What big plays we'll see. Taekwon Dean with his third three. He's got 13 points in the game. Diener shovel pass Jackson. No call. Another bucket for Jackson. If they're going to win, Jackson's got to be supreme on that low box. And they're starting to get him some touches inside. Jackson with eight. He's a transfer from out of Mississippi State. Average double figures down in Starkville. But wanted to come home. He's from Milwaukee. Oh, you can feel the intensity, the emotion, the passion. You can feel it out there. A double on games. He finds the open man in George. Swing it to Brown in an air ball. Weak side rebound. Oh, look at him going after it. Still loose. A little, little guy battling in there, Dino. Games. Brown's going to try it again. Here comes Wade. He's got to go to the goal. Diener. Jackson wide open. Offensive foul on Robert Jackson. Ted Hillary with the call. Tom Green doesn't argue. I mean, two big guys on the inside. Two bodies, man. That Willie Davis style. Big and strong. There's the look on the inside. There's Jackson catching it. Nice look by Mr. Wade. There's Mr. Wade hanging in the air. Very athletic. He bobbles it at once, but he picks it up the second time. Now look at Mr. Gage. Says, hey, watch me create. Come on, you can't check me, Diener. I'm going to create. And there it is. He creates the wide open J. Man, I like playing with him and get those open looks. Oh, yeah. oh, I like to get those open looks. They are making an announcement to the crowd here. Something was thrown onto the court oh, after that last call. That's no, no, that's a wacko, man. We don't need those people in an arena. That's not sportsman life. And remember, it belongs to the home team to make certain to make certain that this place doesn't have anything happen. There's a steal. Remember the significance of this game and people are all wound up. They've been talking about this Louisville game for weeks here, especially as both teams kept winning until Louisville lost on Wednesday. But people were telling us before the game, this is the biggest basketball game in the city of Milwaukee in years because of how good Marquette is and how good Louisville is. And as we told you off the top of the show, they have packed them in. A new Marquette record here in the Bradley Center and a state of Wisconsin college basketball record, 18,850. Here to see Louisville. Wow, and they came to see little Diener. He said, forget about my back, man. He's tickling in the twine. Nothing but nylon. What a nice pass by Gaines. Diener with 10. Brown the miss. No back to rebound. And a foul on the Cardinals. What emotion. You have to feel the emotion. It's electricity here. Two-point lead, Marquette. We'll be back after this message and a word from our ABC station. motorcraft-tested tough battery starting as low as $59.95 and get a free motorcraft car care kit at Ford, Lincoln, and Mercury dealerships and no place else. Is it safe? Yeah, but hurry. This better be quick. Come on, come on, come on. Whoa, uh, there's no way we can beat dollars rates. Hey, how are ya? The meeting's starting. Let's go. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm coming. Yes. Dollar.com? Yeah, from now on. I can't afford us. When it's your money you're spending, log on for our lowest rates at dollar.com. Welcome to Zyber's Walk.
Exciting courses that involve you in web page design and HTML authoring, multimedia CD-ROM production, creating awesome visual effects and digital video production, and 3D computer animation that allows you to use your talents to create something incredible, a career in multimedia communication. Call Louisville Tech today to learn more about our short-term career program. Hi, welcome to Ken Towers Supercenter. Supercenter? I'm just here for tires. You came to the right place. We carry all major brands, but we're more than a tire store. Here at Ken Towers, we also do brakes, shocks, alignments, tune-ups. Well, I didn't know you did all that. Our ASE certified technicians put the care in auto care. You really are a super center. Now, let's take a look at those tires. Tires? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Ken Towery Auto Care Super Center. The good tires. Brakes, shocks, alignment, and tune-up. Guys. And girls. Thank you. Is there any truth to these allegations at all? Yes, my turn. The IT. Wednesday at 11. Milwaukee, a gutsy performance by Travis Diener, the sophomore guard from Fond du Lac, Wisconsin. He knocked down the three to give him the lead. Now he's getting back on D, but he's, he notices Joe Chapman's in the wrong spot, and he hits him to push him over to the right spot. Now, if you're a point guard, doesn't matter if you're a sophomore, you've got to have leadership qualities, and all you have to do is watch Marquette in a huddle like right now, to see that Travis Diener has leadership qualities for this Golden Eagles. And that was a real concern. They lost Cordell Henry last year, who was a big-time scorer and a point guard, a veteran experience player, and people wondered if Diener could make that rotation over to that point guard slot. And he has shown that, and you're 100% right. That demonstrates leadership skills and communication. One of the real war sports are players communicating with one another. It's very important to do that so people understand their assignment. He talks about the games that he's played as a kid with his cousins, who are, as we mentioned, players at St. Louis, and the ball and how they nice get pass. after it. He finds Novak. Novak to miss. You can see Diener's getting every ounce out of his ability. Yeah, and that's what you love about an athlete. I think coaches, when you talk about coaches, the key in any coach's philosophy is they want a player to give their maximum in pursuit of their goals and dreams, and that's what Diener is doing here. He's pouring every ounce of energy on that floor, man. Every ounce he has. Wade on the bench right now for Marquette. Two-point lead for the Golden Eagles. They want Wade to be rested coming down that stretch. And remember, he's a great finisher. Francisco Garcia misses the three, skying for the rebound, Scott Merritt. I like Merritt. He's an improved player from last year. This is going to be a very dangerous team from the postseason, Marquette, and so is Louisville. And a high screen. You've got to talk on those screens. They want to get some looks for Novak. There's a nice feed to Merritt. No foul. And now Gaines trying to be Diener down the floor, and he does. Great job by Gaines to release and get out in transition after the missed shot. Diener, Diener just now did get back onto the floor after he ran all the way down the tunnel trying to put the brakes on. 11 points for Gaines. Off the hands of Merritt, but out of bounds to Marquette. Gaines has stepped up like in the second half after only playing 10 minutes in the first half. Saquon Dean with 13 points in the game, including three threes. Back into the game for Eric Brown. Bryant Northern will check in, and now here come Robert Jackson and Dwayne Wade for Marquette. You know, last year, the Golden Eagles in the NCAA tournament made it for the first time since 1997. I think Memphis is going to make it this year for the first time since 1996. He's got people all around him. I mean, when he catches the ball inside Jackson, he's got people surrounding him. They get out in transition really well. Garcia no, but the follow good for Otis George, who becomes the 10th different Cardinal player to score in this game. 12 of 3. Marquette, the few times that Louisville's gone to the full court pressure, they've done a pretty good job getting over. George did a great job, an offensive rebound right there. Spread in the court, they want to get looks for Novak. Having a tough time getting him looks. Wade, will it count? The ball went in, but no, they're going to call the foul before the shot. Yeah, he got fouled before. There's no doubt. Good call, Ted Hillary. He's going to beat his man right here, and you're going to see the little shove. See, there's the little shove right there. There's the contact before he gets fouled. And yeah, we'd like to welcome those of you who were here to Marquette, where... It's been a good game. Louisville and Marquette. Two-point deficit for the Golden Eagles, but Dwayne Wade has a chance to make that up at the line. And they've done a great job containing Wade, keeping him from scoring opportunities. 
And now we'd like to welcome those of you who are watching Temple manhandling North Carolina State. We are here with the sold-out Bradley Center in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. The biggest college basketball crowd in the history of the state of Wisconsin. Dan Schulman to Dick Vitale, number two Louisville, at number 11 Marquette. And we have had countless lead changes. It seems that every possession, somebody's up by one or down by one or tied. That's the way it's been from the opening tip. Well, we got a rising star in coaching in Tom Queen. We have a superstar and a future Hall of Famer in Rick Pitino. We got two star players in Wade and Gaines. And then we got some diaper dandies, as you saw. The leading scorer is Dean and Novak shooting threes. That three point shot has really revolutionized the game. Novak's an outstanding through number 20. Merritt over Miles. Merritt got it back. He's a really outstanding rebounder. Jackson nice got face. the man in the air. Now Wade spinning on Dean. Tough contested shot. Tip no good. Rebound Ellis Mott. And as to the story of the game, contested shots. He can't get an open look, the All-American Wade. Oh, Garcia travel. You betcha. He didn't know what he wanted to do. Half his body said shoot. Half his body said drive. He made like John Travolta a little Saturday Night Disco, <laughs> man. Look at this crowd. Are you kidding me? 18,850. Oh, would my guy Al McGuire be proud to be strolling in here. First thing he would look is at the upper seats and make sure everything is filled. Al McGuire, they don't come any better, man. Al and Jimmy V, two special people who really were great in handling a bench. They had game management. The Milwaukee Bucks played a game in this building last night. When the Bucks game ended and the crowd started filing out, students were already starting to line up outside, and many of them slept outside wow. this building in last this cold night. Weather? In this cold weather, it was 9 degrees last night, but they slept outside to be the first in here because the students get some general admission tickets behind the basket. This is an NBA building, but Tom Green just loves playing here in front of a crowd of almost 19,000 people. You know, George Cross kids now have won 13 in their last 16. As you look here about the Bucs, they've won 13 in their last 16 games, playing really well now. Boy, Wisconsin basketball is alive and well on many, many levels, is it not? Well, Wisconsin right here in Milwaukee. The Panthers leading the Horizon Conference. Yeah. You think about certainly Wisconsin down there in Madison with Bo Ryan leading the Big Ten. Good. And here more Canada. What about Kentucky? Yeah, it's not bad, huh? Wade into Jackson and a foul. Again, Dwayne Wade making opportunities for other people on his team. You know, you think about Kentucky, I'll talk about some unsung heroes as you're going to watch right here. Creating opportunities with his driving ability and his ability to hang. He's really got ability to attract people to him. Hey, you think about Right now, Moorhead State, coached by Kyle Mason. What a job they're doing. The other day, a kid by the name of Jay Marks had 38 points, an unsung hero. And even with Chris Marcus hurt all year, Western Kentucky having another good season. You know, I think about NBA guys that are now coaching in college. Bob Hill at Fordham, Calipari at Memphis, Butch Beard at Morgan State, Paul Westfall at Pepperdine, Leonard Hamilton at Florida State. I think a lot of college guys are finding out it's a different it's a different world coaching yeah. in the NBA. And I really believe the strengths of most college guys is their ability to repetition, repetition, repetition and practice. And practice is not the same on the NBA level. You don't have those two and a half hour intense workouts. And players have to adjust. Coaches have to adjust. Jackson knocks him down. Hey, Jackson, what an asset he's been since transfers. He's coming back home along with Right now, you think about Danny Miller and Notre Dame. has been a great asset. Yep. Dillon down here in Virginia. And Stone, of course, at Louisville as well. 11 points for Robert Jackson. Marquette leads by two. A deafening crowd again. Unbelievable noise all day long. And they're all standing. They're all standing. Tyquan Dean's going to make a few of them sit down with his fourth three-point over the game. You know, Garcia and Dean, unsung freshmen. They don't get a lot of recognition for what contributors, especially from the perimeter. And this game, it's Dean against Cincinnati. Garcia knocks down eight trifectas. Dean with four today, 16 points in all. Wade sitting on Garcia. Baseline jumper short. Rebound a little bit. When is the last time, Dan, you saw Wade get an open shot? I don't think he's had one today. Maybe a three, but he didn't knock that down. Nothing within the arc. He can't get an open look, man. They're right in his face. And that's the price you pay when you're a superstar. But the supers respond under that pressure. More than each somebody else. Maybe a guy like Novak to step up and knock down shots like he did in the first half. Well, they're aware of him. They're not giving him looks. Merritt got knocked away. And Louisville takes over again. 
that Gaines was matched up with Wade. They were running different people. Gaines, a good defensive player on the ball, is not a great defensive player off the ball. There's a different style playing a guy with the ball or without the ball. Aaron Bradley guarding Gaines, who's got a big size advantage. The three rattles out. He's from right here in Wisconsin. Said no to Marquette, no to Wisconsin. And headed to Louisville for Denny Crum, who's in the house today. And Gaines is a senior. He's going to get a chance to do some damage in the NCAA tournament. Something that Louisville they haven't done much damage there the last few years. But both of these teams, big time threats come March. Jackson, oh. spin under the basket. All kinds of contact, and it's going to go against Louisville. Looks like it's Garcia. You know, you mentioned the NCAA tournament. Patino could be the first coach to take three different schools That's to the right. Final Four. Isn't that something? He's already taken Providence. He took Kentucky. What a run he had at Kentucky, winning that national title in 96, losing it overtime to Arizona in 97. And if he had a healthy Derek Anderson, you might be looking at back-to-back. -back. And then and that Tubby Smith in 98. In 98. Yep. He thinks that Tubby Smith's team this year, he told us in the locker room, is the best he's ever had. He's, that team is dynamite. As you look here on Rick Pitino's file, his second season. It always takes him one year, put his stamp, and by the second year, they're on their way. And friends, this is only the beginning. <laughs> he may get, I'm going to lay one on you. Last Sunday, he went to New Jersey to see a young man play from Lincoln High School in Brooklyn by the name of Sebastian Telfair. And I'm telling you now, Telfair is one of those dynamite dynamite young players who are junior and word out of New York is that Telfair is very, very, very interested in Louisville. Jackson with two more. We'll step aside. One point game. Rick Patino getting Louisville back to the national map, but they've wow. got a tough one on their we hands. We got a good Here's one. Wow. Today. Oh, wow. This is unbelievable. You describe yourself as a moderately risky investor. In that case, how comfortable would you be if in the short term your portfolio value declined by, say, 30 percent? How short is short term? You have to ride these things out. Not acceptable. I'm looking farther down the road than that. I'm going to suggest we modify your risk tolerance to fairly conservative. Yeah. Building wealth begins with a relationship, and our financial advisors know it. UBS Payne Weber. will beat a Ford, Lincoln, or Mercury dealership's price in the name brand tires we sell. Starting with four tires for only $99 or less on select tires. We don't make a lot of the products you buy. We make a lot of the products you buy better. BASF. To me, comfort food is Olive Garden's hot, homemade pasta fagioli soup. They make it with fresh everything. And you can get all you want with their unlimited soup, salad, and breadstick lunch. I feel warm all over just talking about it. Olive Garden, when you're here, you're family. NCAA Basketball, presented by UBS Payne Weber on ABC Sports. Brought to you by UBS Payne Weber. Building wealth begins with a relationship, and our financial advisors know it. And Quality Care Auto Service at Ford, Lincoln, and Mercury dealerships. We are clearly headed for a fantastic finish here in Milwaukee today. At no point in this game has either team had a lead of more than six points, and there have been 14 ties in this game. While we have a moment, this week's Payne Weber Senior of the Week is Xavier University's David West. Another big game today with 26 against Rhode Island. He leaves the 16th ranked Musketeers at better than 20 points and 12 rebounds per game. And in a win last week against Dayton West, had an incredible 47 points 
and 18 rebounds. Off the court, David West has already completed coursework for a degree in communication arts, and he also speaks to students at grammar schools and is active in the Urban League. Payne Weber will donate $1,000 to its Senior of the Week Scholarship Fund in the name of Xavier Senior, David West. He was a pre great senior right there, huh? He was a preseason first team All-American in my magazine. Gains on the feed from Stone. A couple of seniors getting it done for Louisville. And the Cardinals are back out in front. Nice pass. I'll tell you a big key here so far tonight. Marquette this afternoon is 18 for 18 on a free throw line. They are outstanding on the season, better than 75%. Nice. Give it up. Diener. Jackson. Boy, he's got pretty good touch around the rim. He's got 12 points in the second half. 14 for the game. The big fella dominating inside versus Stone. The transfer from Mississippi State. Garcia cannot answer. Should be Marquette ball, and it is. What a wacky year in college basketball. An absolute wacky year. We're going to take a look right now to feed him. Great look on the inside. There's a backdoor cut. Catches it for the layup. Great look. Great angle. Travis Dean with the ball in his hands. The tough sophomore battling a back injury suffered Wednesday. A couple of times you've seen him grimace or flinch, but he's playing some big-time minutes and playing well here today. He told me he feels okay. He said no excuses before the game. He said he feels really well. Hey, let me tell you what a wacky year it's in college basketball. On December 23rd, you want to hear about the top ten? Alabama was number one. I mean, and now they're struggling. And he also, Indiana was number ten, and Connecticut number six. I mean, that's how wacky it's been all year. Already today, ranked teams who have lost include Pittsburgh, Notre Dame, Connecticut, and Craig just today. Jackson. And Stone got a piece of that. Sanders with a rebound. Sanders off the bench has been productive. It's productive in the first half. It's rebounded again. One of the concerns of Rick Pitino. Sanders with eight. Marquette by three. Gaines forces the contact and draws the foul. Now big 18 for 18 on a free throw Here. line. Think about how major that is. You talk about winning games in special situations. Whether you talk football or basketball, you got to be able to exist in special situations. And right there, that's one area of free throw line. Dick, that foul on Robert Jackson, his fourth. He will remain in the game. I'm going to tap him right now. I bring the ball right at Jackson. They got him on Miles, who's not much of an offensive threat. Reese Gaines is, though, as he ties the game. Our 16th tie of the game. We'd like to welcome those of you who watched Arizona State defeat UCLA this afternoon. Dan Schulman and Dick Vitale with you here at the Bradley Center in Milwaukee. NCAA basketball on ABC Sports presented by UBS Payne Weber. And this game has lived up to its billing and beyond. Marquette with a slight rebounding advantage. Rick Pitino's number one concern coming in. Miles with the wide open feed. Louisville goes back on top. This game has been within six points one way or the other the entire afternoon, as you would expect from the top two teams in conference. Years. It's been amazing the way it's turning around with each possession. Great diagonal pass made that happen. And then we're looking at Louisville battling back after that loss. 17 in a row. Last time they won 17 in a row was 1986 when they won the national title with never nervous Curtis Ellison. And the time before that was 1980 when they won the national championship. So that's a pretty good omen for the Cardinals. They're also wearing their black uniforms for the first time this season. And what they're playing for is top spot not only in the American division of Conference USA, but in the league as a whole. Memphis leads the other division, but Marquette and Louisville right now are the two top teams in this league. Hey, what did he say to us about superstition? Rick Pitino had said, he said, hey, we're wearing black. We're all in four wearing black last year, losing to the likes of Cincinnati and losing to Kentucky's and people like He said, it doesn't matter what we were wearing last year. We weren't a good team. He said, I'm not superstition, but what about Tom, Tom Green? This is great. We go into Tom Green's office to talk to him before the game. And there's about eight leather chairs around the table, and he sits down, and we sit down, and Coach Green says, Dick, last time you were here, we won, and you sat in that chair, so you moved to this chair. <laughs> and, then, and then he says to me, Dan, Brent Musburger did the game with Dick last year, and he sat in that chair, so would you mind sitting there? Not that he's superstitious or anything. That's that right. coaches <laughs> are wacky, man. Superstitious. <laughs> Garcia, the miss. Loose ball. Miles. 
Great rebound by Miles. Gets an opportunity for game. Misses the three. And look at oh, Wade. Look at the high rise there. The Skywalker. Missed the way. What elevation by Wade. Got to go to the All-American. Got to go to Wade right now. Here he is. Oh, Sanders had the rebound for a moment, and Miles ripped it away. Bates trying to shoot that jumper. He should pack the basket. Gaines is fouled on the drive. What effort we are seeing by these two teams here today. You know, you talk about passion. You talk about all the intangibles. You talk about it, intensity, emotion. It's right there. This is a tournament climate, tournament environment. One-point game headed to the home stretch here at the Bradley Center. Motorcraft tested tough battery starting as low as $59.95 and get a free Motorcraft car care kit at Ford, Lincoln, and Mercury dealerships and no place else. Hey, it's me. Listen, I'm at Office Depot and Chuck here has some great ideas about how we can get better organized. You know, improve our work process, avoid stepping on each other's toes, just stop doing the same job twice. You're at Office Depot? Yeah. Office Depot sells office products to more of the world than anyone, so we know how to help you get better organized. Office Depot. What you need, what you need to know. Oh, thank you. Sony. Samsung. Cubit Packard. Motorola. Bang. Hey, it's not my party. Don't look at me. For the latest name brands and answers to your questions, come to Radio Shack. Get this Sprint Color Screen Foam for $49.99 or this Palm Zire $99.99 with free carrying case. I always wanted to be a name dropper. Howie! What? Radio Shack. She's dark green, cash back, low intro, and end of the month. He's yellow, travel, everyday rate, and middle of the month. She's purple, travel, low intro, and beginning of the month. Introducing Bank One's Personal Platinum, the simple new way to choose your rate, your reward, your billing date, even your color. Bank One's Personal Platinum, issued by us, but created by you. It's the world premiere movie TV Guide Picks as best of this week. I'm in rare form these days. Matthew Broderick, alias is Victor Garber, in Meredith Wilson's The Music Man, ABC Sunday. It's wide open nationally in terms of national player of the year. Dwayne Wade right here at Marquette has to be a contender. Josh Howard at Wake Forest, and I know a guy you love, TJ Ford down in Texas. Kyle Korver and Creighton, a guy you were touting several weeks ago as a potential player of the year candidate, a guy we've talked about already today, David West at Xavier. There are five or ten other guys you could put on this list as well. It's wide open. Well, you know, if we're throw on Nick Collison coming on strong, but I like pound for pound, it's the little guy. I think he's such a dominant player at TJ4 down here. It's not about stats. It's about what he creates, opportunities. And David West coming on big time. But what a finish we got here. Two defensive clubs, two clubs well coached, shot selection big. Marquette's been super at the free throw line. We got great players, great coaches, and we're going to have a great finish. Oh, baby, this is college hoops. It's awesome, baby, with a cut in the way. One point lead, Louisville. Three and a half to go as the Cardinals try to snap Marquette's 28 game home winning streak. The Cardinals, the last team to beat Marquette here, triple overtime two years ago. Don't forget, 12 days from now, on the 27th, Marquette will be at Louisville, a Thursday night game at 8 o'clock Eastern on ESPN2, and you and I are hoping that that one's going to be as much fun as this one is. Well, you know, Freedom Hall is one of those special places in college basketball. As we said, don't forget the great job Denny Crum did over the years as the leader. By the way, the two stars coming into the game, Reese Gaines has 16 points. Dwayne Wade has 11, only 2 of 12 from the floor. They're in his own, trying to match up out of his own, Wade up on top. They try to always give you different looks. But one advantage with Gaines as the point guard is his vision, his great size to look over the top of the defense. Not many 6'6 point guards like Reese Gaines. That's a great advantage when you can see right over the top. Miles. 
surrounded, got rid of it. Dean with an open jumper off the glass and good. The freshman has 18. What a great look by Lattice. Again, it goes to the interior. They work on that constantly. To the inside and then out to the perimeter. To the inside and out to the perimeter. Saquon Dean, the high scorer in this game with 18. Well, he's responded big time, just like his buddy Garcia did against Cincinnati. Two young kids, both tight for Dandies. Dean are on the drive, finds Wade. And the foul is going to go against Dwayne Wade. Offensive foul, his second. And that was an excellent call. I don't think there was any doubt about it. A lot of times you think that the home guy's going to get away with that. But there's no question. He was up in the air. He lost balance. And the defensive player's established. Miles is right there. Miles has made two great plays. He made the great pass out to Dean. And then he took the charge. So Louisville now with the ball and a three-point lead. Less than two and a half to go. Now the crowd trying to lend its support. The biggest college basketball crowd ever in the state of Wisconsin. 18,850. They need to stop right here. 28-game win streak at stake. Ten in a row at stake. Remember, Louisville had St. Louis by seven with a minute and a half to go Wednesday and gave it away to the Billikens with turnovers. Yeah, he finished and managed the clock at the end. Mark Lee Perry made one big play after another at the end. Rick Pitino was very disappointed, he said, because they allowed him to get to the basket, didn't foul him, didn't attack him. He said, you got to knock him down. Rick, who started at University of Massachusetts as a player, was there when Julius Irving, Dr. J, was a senior. Foul on Novak, his third. And two shots coming for Francisco Garcia, who coming into the game had made 90% of his free throws on the season, 18 for 20. You know what's good here in the second half? The adjustment that Rick Petito and his kids have made in finding Novak, not allowing him any looks to shoot the three. He's a brilliant tactician, a brilliant leader. And Novak has not scored in the second half, Dick. But I'll tell you one thing, he can flat out dress, too. I want his hand me downs. And the Garcia with concentration. Comes up empty. So the 90% free throw shooter misses one, and it's a four-point lead with plenty of time to go. Marquette's gone two and a half minutes since they last scored. What a shot by Wade. Acrobatic. I tell you all game long that he's one of those clutch players like Hollis Price that wants the ball late. What an acrobatic shot. I mean, that was big time. That was not an easy opportunity. Wade's third basket of the night. He's got 13 points in all. I would take Gaines and rotate him inside if Dieter plays him. I would rotate him to the inside. Rick Pitino doesn't want this one to slide away with the four-point lead. Take a look at his big play. This is clutch, man. That is big time. Hanging in the air. I mean, that's Jordan-esque right there. It is. I mean, that's hanging in the air. I think he's got an unbelievable future as a pro. Out. Robert Jackson has no future in this game now. The big guy has fouled out for Marquette with 14 points. There's Barishna Crawford shorts. Look at the ballerina. <laughs> Look at the little dance. Hanging in the air. Kissing it on the glass. Oh, that was not an easy opportunity. But great players respond to special moments. A great player at the line right now for Louisville and Reese Gaines after the fifth foul by Robert Jackson. It's just Tom, Tom Green made an announcement to the crowd. Please don't throw anything on the floor. Why jeopardize the responsibilities on the home team? I mean, the officials can call it technical yeah, on the home yeah. team in a case where there's not control. That's really good sportsmanship right there by Tom Green grabbing the microphone. Some fans just don't get it. They can't come to a game and just enjoy the game. And how could you not enjoy this? No matter who wins, this has been an unbelievable effort by both clubs. Their effort has been super superb. 16 for games. Really stepped it up earlier in the second half. Knocks down the front end. Marquette so good from the free throw line. But right now, Louisville, they got some guys out there who can shoot them in the games of Garcia and Dean. Managing the clock at the end. Coaches really, really stressed that all the time in practice. Came up short on that that free throw, making it right now a one-possession game. That would have been big. It would have ended a two-possession game. And the ball in the hands of Wade. Games covering him. Star on star right now. I get it to Wade. I get it to Wade, man. You're going to money time, crunch time. I find Wade. He'll create an opportunity for someone. Look at Dean playing. Hey, he's got his jersey in his mouth. Yeah. Taekwon Dean. And I... I think earlier, I believe Taekwon Dean is bleeding, 
and he is concealing that by soaking his mouth, by putting his jersey into his mouth. I think he's doing that to keep from having to come out of the game. Well, you got great eyes, man. See, you guys, you can see the look loose here. He's biting his jersey. I'm telling oh. you, he's bleeding. He might be bleeding. Yeah, I be saw right. him before. He, he does not want to come out of this game, and I think he's trying to conceal it. And you can't blame him for not wanting to come out of this game the way he's played today. Now I'd like to welcome all of you who watched the conclusion of the NC State Temple game. For all of you around the country joining us here on ABC NCAA Basketball presented by UBS Payne Weber, we have had a phenomenal game here in Milwaukee between number two Louisville and number 11 Marquette. As mentioned earlier, the biggest crowd in the history of the state of Wisconsin in college basketball. Rick Pitino against Tom oh, Brady. Denny Crum. There's Denny Crum who... Of course, a Hall of Famer had so much incredible success for Louisville with two national championships. Six final six fours. Six final fours. And dominated in the 80s, just like I believe the Beatles kids will dominate in the 2000s. Wade does a good job to the get to the line right now. Notice how he's, again, wanting the ball late in the game. A lot of guys have a tendency to disappear from the basketball. This star wants the ball. He wants the pressure on him. And he's been responding throughout his two years in a Marquette uniform. Number four on Stone. Dean either just needs something to chew on right now to keep from getting nervous where he's bleeding. And, and I saw him about at the five-minute mark. He took a shot under the boards. I think he's it bleeding. Is. Well, it could be a nervous habit as well. You never know. Well, yeah, you're right. There it is. From the chin. Yes, yeah. sir. You're right on there top of go. it, Dan Schulman. I'll tell you, man. You're so sharp. I mean, I work with so many great guys. Here's way now. He's more important right now than praising you. <laughs> Oh, this is what we wanted when we came here. A mailbox smasher right to the end. Gage with that great size now on the perimeter. They're going to try to invert him. They're going to try to rotate him down inside. You want veterans to have the ball. You want to go to. You want to make it a Gage Wade show down the stretch. They're going to try to let a screen for Gage. They're going to get help on him. Dean on the drive. Nice pass. Miles inside, and it's blocked by Merritt. No, Sam Paul falls. Sam Paul yeah. with the call. Number four on Merritt, and Miles is going to the line. What an opportunity by Dean. Dean created that for Miles with the dump down. Look at the dribble penetration. Great head fake from the triple threat position. Draws the defense. A little bobble. Oh, wow. That's a tough call to call a foul there. That's a tough call, man. They've been allowing so much contact. Where's the foul? Where's the foul there? I don't know about the foul. I don't think the official had a good angle to make that call. Miles, 58% on the season coming into the game. Come on, you got great eyes. Did you see a foul there? Uh, I'd let it go. This time of the game, last three times down the floor, Louisville's made the first, missed the second. Novak back in for offense now for Marquette. He is their best outside shooter. Yeah, they got to find him. They know he can shoot that three. I mean, the officials have done one heck of a yes, job here this afternoon. This it's a very been, physical day. Yeah, it really has. Yeah, more, it's been an intense physical affair. More Croft and certainly Hillary have done a heck of a job here. Yeah. But you want the game won, won by the kids now. You don't want to put people on the line with some cheap opportunities. Two huge free throws for Ellis Miles, who's also got 14 rebounds today. Marquette's going to get the ball back down three. A great doubleheader coming up tomorrow. The premiere of NBA Sundays on ABC Sports. First, it's Allen Iverson of the 76ers taking on Jason Kidd of the Nets. And then Tim Duncan leads the hot San Antonio Spurs against the Sacramento Kings. NBA Sundays starts tomorrow on ABC. We got hoops. I'll tell you one thing. You watch Allen Iverson. It's like watching a concert, man. He is a show. You talk about giving his body up. But look at Rick Pitino working his time out now. 29.6 on the clock. You want all players to understand two things right now. You want them to understand time, and you want them to understand situation and strategy, and they got to know score as well. Some kids just get blank in the timeouts and don't listen, and it's important for them to listen now. Every player's got to know their role because this is the difference now, man, to winning and losing. It's the difference to going to the locker room jubilant or going to the locker room with sad. Sadness. The bottom line, it comes to 29.6 of listening and executing. Double bonus both ways. One timeout remains for each team, and the arrow favors the Cardinals, as does the scoreboard. They'd like to get Novak to look for that three. Garcia is not going to let him go. There's Novak. Wade better on the drive than on the shot. 
tries to dump it down to Sanders. Marquette will retain possession, but 15 seconds came off the clock. You know, if you got a quick score there, then you try to steal. But now you got to start to think about the three. You got to think about the three. Peter can shoot it. He can shoot it. Peter can shoot it. We may stay here all day. You know what? I'd like to stay here all day. He's from Wisconsin. What a shot for the superstar for Louisville. What a shot. Incredible restage in his home state. Yes, sir. Murray Paul is very patient. The clock winded down. Take a look at Dieter. Almost a four-point shot there, man. He almost got fouled. He drills it now. Here comes the clock now. Gains under control, Mr. Schumann. I mean, that's a that's a downtown jump shot, man, from downtown Milwaukee. You talked about how the stars step up oh. at the end of the game, and Gaines has done that. He was in foul trouble in the first half. He only scored four points. He's got 16 points in the second half. Even Denny Crump is standing. This game has been so exciting. They put the clock back, by the way, to five and a half because Tom Crean got the timeout called before they inbounded. So Marquette will try to set up for a game-tying three. Well, remember this. If I'm Louisville right now, I'm thinking about pressuring the ball, taking time off the clock, and then fouling and not allow him to shoot the three, man. This is where Jimmy V and I agree. 28 consecutive wins, third longest. Looks like it's in total jeopardy now. But remember, we've seen miracle finishes. Yep. What a great effort by both teams, man. A great job coaching by both. Players responded. I would, I'll tell you the truth, I would not give them the look for the three. I would pressure to take time off the clock, and if you foul, before they can shoot the three. Now the best three-point shooters, if it gets that far, that Marquette has, Steve Novak, number 20, he is three for six today. Travis Diener, who just hit that huge one, he's three for five today. Merritt's also in the game. Sanders is also in the game. And of course, Wade is in the game. But Wade is not as good an outside shooter. See, right now, I wouldn't give him that three. Another timeout to see the yeah. alignment. So that's the final timeout. Now, both teams are completely out of timeouts. Wow, what a finish. What an unbelievable finish. <laughs> How great it is to see a kid like Gage. He steps up big right in his own state. He's from Madison, Wisconsin. Just five and a half seconds remain unless Marquette can tie it up and keep it going. Tomorrow, a new kind of gangster is taking over L.A. And stopping this mob will become Joe Friday's obsession. Ed O'Neill stars an all-new Dragnet tomorrow on ABC. At no point in this game today has either team led by more than six points. These are currently the top two teams in Conference USA. In the previous seven years of this league, all seven years this league's been in existence, Cincinnati has won the regular season title. That figures to change this year. And whoever wins this game is going to have a huge leg up on the other. I'll tell you, we know about Rick Pitino and his stardom. But ladies and gentlemen, remember the name Tom Cream. You are seeing a special guy to coach on that other side. He's down three, but he is going to become special in the coaching fraternity. We know about Rick Pitino. He's already a star. And today he had his kids ready to come into this tough environment where they've won 28 in a row and to respond after losing like they did to St. Louis where they had a seven-point lead as you look at Tom Green and his staff. Now let's see. Right now they're going to pressure the basketball. Remember when he was coaching Kentucky? He didn't pressure the ball against Brant Hill when he threw that pass to wow. Christian Leitner. <laughs> He's pressuring the ball here not to give him a good look. Not to give him a good look. There he gets it into Wade. Peter the hand. Hand in his face. Opportunity and Louisville's going to win it. Louisville snaps Marquette's 28 game home winning streak with a thrilling 73 to 70 win. Reese Gaines hits the three and stands up as the winner. Part of his 20 point afternoon. A huge win for the second ranked Cardinals coming back from their loss against St. Louis Wednesday night. I'll tell you, Reese Gaines showed that he's a PTP here in the second half. He made a lot of big plays. We're going to watch here defensively, trying to play. They tried to get that screen on that baseline. Wade with the good catch, stepping to the ball. You know, Dieter, Dieter, Dieter didn't see him, but Novak was wide open on the other side of the floor. But you can't blame him. He had Garcia, who's 6'7", right up in his face. That would have been a tough pass yeah. to try to make. Yeah. Tough pass to make. Look at Gage. He's celebrating right now. Happy as can be. Joyous. Last year, they got beat here. I'll tell you, what a great finish.
Two tremendous teams going head we'll to head. We'll come back here, set up for an interview. Outstanding performance by all the kids. Novak, Diener, and Wade for Marquette. Gaines and company for Louisville. What a thrilling win for the Cardinals today as we send it back.